Hey guys, what's going on? Side Home Theater Dude, got a brand new episode for you today. Today I'm going to be doing the uh, setup of the Earthquake Sound, what is this, the uh, Supernova Mark VI. There is a Mark VII, but this is the dual 15-inch subwoofer that er Earthquake has. Maybe you guys just bought this one, maybe you guys are interested in how they actually work. The way this one is set up is actually really cool because there's different parameters in it that actually optimize it for your space. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into that and I'll do it right after the intro. All right, so there's gonna be a couple things that you're gonna need for making this setup for the Mark VI subwoofer. You're going to need a uh, your calibration mic from your AVR. So if you have a Yamaha, your YPAO mic, if you have you know your Denon Marantz, you're gonna need your Odyssey calibration mic. And then you're also going to need a DB meter. I would highly recommend grabbing a dedicated DB meter, but some people, they just use their cell phones. I mean, just as long as it's the same source and you're in the same position, I don't think it really matters all that much. It's all just normalizing it to the same thing. Last thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a buddy. Um, you can't do this yourself. I mean, you probably can if you have some like stands and stuff like that, but to make your life easier, just grab a buddy, make things easier on you. And uh, that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so these are gonna be the very first steps of setting this entire subwoofer setup up. So what you're gonna wanna do is come over here on your crossover network, turn it to bypass. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take this thing completely out of the equation. So it doesn't matter where it's at on this little dial then it's gonna take it completely off. If you wanna be 100% in control and not use an LFE type setup, then you would leave this on and then you would manually adjust where you're gonna have it. So typically for people with a modern AVR and they have an LFE, which is low frequency effects, it's a specific signal for bass effects, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and leave this on bypass, which basically turns it off. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn this subsonic filter off which basically means anything under 20 hertz is not gonna be uh, re reproduced on this subwoofer. It's gonna slope off on its, uh, see that, slope off? It's gonna slope off on the, um, on, on the frequency register so that you're not gonna be hearing, or not gonna be feeling all of those super low uh, effects like at the beginning of Edge of Tomorrow, those things that you can't hear, but you can just feel in the room, it pressurizes the room, it pressurizes your ears and shakes your legs and all that other stuff. So if you want the home theater experience, then I would leave this off. But if you want to, you know, save your plants and your dishes in your kitchen, then turn it on and you don't have all those vibrations felt throughout the entire house. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, these phase delays. I'm gonna leave this on zero and I'm gonna leave this phase shift on zero. This stuff will be messed with later on. So just leave it um, and run your levels on your auto calibration. But just before you do that, set it there and then you don't have to worry about it. So next thing you're gonna have is your room corrections. So here you have different um, abilities to boost and cut specific realms of frequency. So you can actually boost up your 20 Hertz, your 30 Hertz and your 40. There are specific type of uh, settings on the manual, the owner's manual that they recommend that work for a lot of people's spaces. But if you're not a lot of people and you really wanna custom tailor this to your specific room, which is why they put the room corrections in there in the first place, then you go ahead and mess with these. But I'll show you guys what to set these things up as later. Just leave these on the uh, 12 o'clock position for the auto calibration, and then you can mess with them a little later on. So now that you have everything set up, you're gonna hook in your power cable. You're going to put your um, subwoofer cable into input two. Input two is a dedicated LFE input channel. So um, if you have a modern AVR, like a Denon and Marantz, you know, Yamaha, um, typically some th things that are made within the last 10 years are gonna have an LFE channel. So you're gonna go from your subwoofer out on your AVR, you're gonna plug the other end of that cable right into here. So that's gonna be your input, your subwoofer two input. Some people, what they do is they split these off, they Y them out, or they even have you know one cable for left, one cable for right. That's typically a legacy thing. That's not stuff that happens uh, anymore. But uh, you know, basically uh, just set it up this way and you should be, be just fine. Unbalanced connection here, un a balanced connection here. And then this, in this uh, gain control right here, it's an infinity gain control, so it's never going to stop rotating. And each turn of the uh, dial is gonna, inc is gonna equal one dB. So one dB back, one dB forward. And then um, basically you're just gonna set it up like that. What I would do is I would just leave this the way it is right now and then run your auto calibration. And then you're gonna come back here and absolutely set this thing up 100% for your room. Um, this has a clipping light involved in that. And then that will actually help you um, get it to where you need to be and then you know have your little headroom by turning it off so that you're removing the clipping clipping destroys amplifiers it destroys speakers and it's just not good so that's basically how you do it now all you have to do is run your auto calibration and then you come back here and start messing with all this stuff so we're going to go ahead and do that right now 
Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and get a um, test tone going. You can use YouTube, you can use testtonegenerator.com, whichever one it is. Um, you have you can even have a disc. Basically just use one frequency uh, test tone. Uh, typically, we're, we're, we're right here we're picking 50 hertz, but you can pick any of them that you want. Make sure that your entire setup is in two channel stereo. You don't want the re your, your entire home theater going right now. We're just setting up the, the subwoofer. So um, just for this specific video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with just your front speakers. It will translate into the rest of the home theater. So that isn't really a concern. So um, you're just gonna have your front two speakers going, your left and your right, and your subwoofer. Don't put it on pure direct mode. That takes your subwoofer out of the equation. Make sure that you only have your left, your right, and your subwoofer going right now. So what you do is you have your buddy at your main listening position and then you have your db meter obviously we could have had um, a better um, representation but right now he's just using a cell phone um, but i mean I, I left my db meter at home but just for the completion of this video we're going to show you how to set this thing up 100 percent so um, you're not really targeting any specific uh, db you're just looking at where it peaks so this thing is going to start turning uh, start going up and start going down and that's going to translate into directly on what i'm doing back here on the subwoofer itself. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna play the uh, test tone and then you're gonna start manipulating this phase delay right here. And then whenever it peaks, then you're gonna stop turning it. And then that's about it. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the entire process and then um, I'm gonna get back to you guys on the rest of the setup. Okay, so very first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go over here to your gains. As your test tone is playing, you're gonna start slowly turning this thing up. This light's gonna click on it's just gonna indicate that you're increasing your dBs at reference level, which is gonna be either zero or whatever it is for your room. Um, you're gonna keep cranking this up at the same test tone. Whenever the light stays steady, that's whenever you stop. Okay, so you see how the light is steady on there right now? What you do is you turn it three clicks down from steady. So now your subwoofer gain is set. I hope you guys can hear me because it's getting kind of loud in here. <laughs> so now your subwoofer level are, is set. So now what you're gonna do is start messing with your phase delay. So I'm gonna st slowly start turning this up. Wade, you let me know whenever it starts to peak, okay? So I'm turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. What, what DB are you at? 81. So you're at 81. I'm going to turn it all the way up just for the sake of this video. Does it go any higher or lower? Okay. So now that's going lower, you're getting away from it. So now I'm going to go ahead and start back, and then you let me know whenever it peaks again. So turning it up, turning it up. Okay, so turn it back down. Right there. So now that the, uh, the DB has peaked, you leave it right there. You pay attention to where this, this mark is. Okay? So now what you do is you go ahead and flip the phase. Flip the phase 180 degrees, and you start over again. Pay attention to where this line is, because the lowest turn on this dial is where you're going to leave it. So I'm going to start over. Wait, let me know. So it's at zero. I'm going to start turning it up. OK, so this is prime example. You can go ahead and cut the uh, volume, weight. Okay, so now we just basically showed you how to set this thing up on um, from your levels and your phase or, or, and your um, your phase delay. The simplest way to, to just recap what I just did is at zero, whenever I had this thing flip to zero, it was at a higher turn on this knob, right? So that's just just take that into consideration. You flip the switch and you have less turns on the knob. Which whichever which whichever one of these gives you less turns on the knob and the highest dB at your main listening position, that's the one you used. And now what I'm gonna show you is how to do the uh, room corrections. Um, you can mess around with this to your heart's content. This doesn't have DSP. Basically, this is kind of like a, uh, a, a user-controlled DSP. I would recommend using um, RoomEQ Wizard to get this 100% perfect across the entire spectrum. But for most spaces, for most rooms, I'm gonna show you what the manufacturer recommends putting these settings on, okay? Okay, so just to verify, um, the settings on this thing is this one at 20 hertz is three quarters of the way up. So here is 12 o'clock, and then here's max. You're gonna have it three quarters. This one is 30 hertz. This is um, you know zero, and this is max. You're gonna have it halfway turned. This one is your 40 hertz. So now you're gonna have that one a quarter turned. So here is basically how it's gonna end up. So I hope you guys uh, could understand this video. If you you know trip, fall, stumble, whatever, go ahead and just rewind the video. 
Um, this is very straightforward. This is all the information that I have. It's just very, very simple to set this thing up. Um, so that's it. All right, guys, so we went ahead and finished up the uh, setup of the Earthquake a Supernova Mark VI uh, Piano Black su subwoofer. And uh, seriously, I really can't believe the night and day performance from beginning to end on how this thing sounds. Um, I've had this thing set up in my space to where it's 100%. Now I have my buddy's space. Um, the reason why I'm doing different spaces is so that you guys just don't think that there's only one area that these things can work in and that you know, my uh, wheelhouse is just a one trick pony. So what I do is, is I brought this over to my buddy Wade's house. He has this super cool underground, super huge uh, home theater. And uh, for that one, it's only 600 watts to fill this entire room. I think it's something uh, to be said about this Supernova. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a full on review of the Supernova Mark VI. And like I was saying, there is a Mark VII. There's a couple of different parameters in between those. But I'll go ahead and explain that in a future video. Uh, but I'll do a full on review of that one very, very shortly. And thanks for watching. Make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. Catch you next time.